I think if we are going to preserve America, we have to first preserve those values and those laws and the principles that those laws are built on, or we just won't preserve America. In 1978, I believe, Congress drew a circle around 75,000 acres that bordered 53 miles of the New River. And in less than 25 years, the National Park Service owns over 75% of that land. And I was shocked to find out they want it all. I was in a room when that first meeting I walked into and there was an armed guard with a gun at the door. And I hate to say it real blunt, but hell flew in me. This is America can't take my land. You're not going to take my land. And if you do, I'm going to object. People don't realize what's happening. It's not just me. It's happening throughout America. And that's the bad part. We are the caretakers of this area. Not the National Park Service. I'm thinking about how beautiful it is here, and I might lose it. And all my neighbors, they can break your heart and the soul. It's not right. It's not right what they're doing. Well, I ask a, a certain party of the National Park Service if the road was going to go through the house. He said that the, uh, the road would probably go through my living room. I had spoke to Donnie Wilson with the Park Service, and I asked him then, you know, well, after that's done, you know, will they still bulldoze the home down? And he then told me, well, with this being one of the nicer homes on the river, that they may possibly not bulldoze it down, maybe move some park officials or someone in here. And so they're telling us that we can't live here, but yet they can put someone else in here. Now that I'm uh, half a million dollars in debt, he decided to change his mind. That made up my mind that we wasn't going to live here much longer. This was going to be our burial place right here. We moved here thinking that, that we were going to die here. It just really hurts. It had such an impact on my husband, who in the last three years has had kidney failure, kidney transplant, three heart attacks, quad bypass surgery, until the public is aware and they get involved. This is going to keep going on. As of right now, we have no control. We just keep fighting. We're smarter on every one of these cases you learn something. You get smarter, your attorneys get sharper. Uh, look at what Mr. Hage, through his endurance of, of the last 13 or 14 years, look what he brought us. You know, he filled in pieces of the puzzle that we didn't have. My granddad was smart enough to know when they started taking our property that you had to go into the court of claim. But you know what we didn't understand is, we didn't understand we went in there arguing about property. The key was water. These are water-based states. Water is the oil of the 21st century. It's more valuable than gold. I own these water rights. That gives me control of the grazing lands. I own the forage out there too. What we have found is that you will have either the Bureau of Land Management or the Forest Service regulating the rancher in a way that it becomes impossible for the rancher to make a living. So then here comes another environmental group, usually called Nature Conservancy or Trust for Public Lands. They grind you down and drive you out of business. That's the strategy. Somewhere in the future, the 
Banking institutions and financial institutions will own the West livestock industry. There is a remedy. But if you go to the wrong court with the wrong question, you can expect to get an unsatisfactory answer. Whether America continues to deliver on its hope or whether it doesn't comes down to one simple premise. And that is, will private property survive in today's America? We thought if you bought property in the United States of America, it belonged to you. That's the American dream. You come in, you take something, you know, you put your sweat, your labor, and your freedom into it, and you get the, you reap the benefit. That's what America's supposed to be about. The Forest Service basically declared martial law. They were going to use the permit process to break it. They come in on either side of the Diamond Bar Ranch and set up roadblocks. They all had sidearms, they had a different assault weapons. They got a little calf in there, and of course the cows can't see, they got them blinded. They're coming around in the light looking into a dark hole, and they just keep trampling this calf every time they go around, every time they go around. Well, I'm all right if they're in my possession, I'm letting them out. This is enough. First thing I feel is two of them grab me. And they pulled my hands around behind me and uh, cuffed me. Charged me with assault on federal officers. All they had to do is say they feared for their lives, and that becomes misdemeanor assault, and every charge is good for a year in the penal. They sent him to Latuna. It's a prison down in Anthony, Texas. They had to make an example of him. They had to put him away, get him out of here, and make an example of him so nobody else would try and do what we did. And essentially, it's worked. It basically took everything we got. We're gonna have to go somewhere else. We're gonna have to start over. But so long as we can run cows and be left alone, it's gotta be better than what we have endured for the last 20 years here. I'm going to go to Argentina. Like I said, you're at their mercy, and they have no mercy. 